unfortunately, I don't have slides. So, and the the uh, images were a little bit important for a couple of the uh, uh, the things that I talk about. But um, good afternoon. I am incredibly excited to be here amongst such an amazing group of researchers, rabbis, academicians, authors, and seekers. I would like to tell you a little bit about myself, how I got here, um, the goals of our genealogical research unit, and how we plan to go about accomplishing those goals. First of all, I grew up in Syracuse, New York, uh, to a completely secular, middle-class family. Um, Religion wasn't even discussed in our household. It was sort of like I got the impression that my parents felt like that's kind of what people did a long time ago. It was very quaint, but you know we don't do that anymore. Um, so my father was Irish, and my mother is from Puerto Rico. I went on and got my bachelor's degree in biology and chemistry, and then uh, went on to veterinary school and came back to Syracuse and opened my own practice. In 2007, uh, I had sold my practice. I was going through a divorce. Uh, I had a two-year-old son, and I was going through somewhat of a midlife crisis. To make a long story short, varying circumstances uh, led to me having what those of us who've experienced it would call a spiritual awakening. I asked my mother a lot of questions. She had no idea what I was talking about. Nothing that I asked her triggered any memories or anything. But she said, you know, you can talk to my sister Miriam's son, James. Miriam passed away. But uh, James, who's a good 15 years older than me, uh, you know, she said you can talk to him. He spent more time in Puerto Rico. So I sent an email to James, and I sort of explained uh, what had happened to me and what was going on. And he wrote me back immediately, and he said that it was very interesting that I wrote him because uh, two weeks earlier, he had been in a synagogue for a co-worker's son's bar mitzvah, and he just got a really strange, warm feeling like he was at home. And he remembered Grandpa Maldonado saying to him, you're Jewish. And he used to say, oh, come on, Grandpa, I'm Catholic. You know, you must be joking. And he would always say back to him, no, you're Jewish. And at the time, he just thought it was a joke between him and Grandpa Maldonado. Um, but when I wrote to him and he had this experience in the synagogue, he said, maybe Grandpa Maldonado was trying to tell me something. At the time that this was all occurring to me, I was living 10 blocks away from Shirith Israel, the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue in Manhattan. And I immediately contacted Rabbi Chaim Angel, who's Rabbi Mark Angel's son, for those of you who know of him. And I started studying for conversion. I believed so strongly that my mother's ancestors had been Anosim, um, and my desire to return to the Jewish people was so strong that I felt like the best path for me was to convert now and ask questions later. <laughs> so I completed my conversion in 2009. I maintained two homes, one in Manhattan and one in Israel, um, and did that for a while. In about 2010, I met Gloria Mount, uh, the founder of Casa Shalom, and I was inspired to commit my life to researching my genealogy, a commitment that's obviously continued till this day. Um, it, it has led me on an, quite a journey. Uh, I have personally visited uh, archives in Salt Lake City, Puerto Rico, the Canary Islands, Segovia, Simancas, and others. Um, I also spent thousands of hours, I would say, in front of the computer and um, made connections with genealogists from all over the world who have done different parts of my genealogy, such as in France. Um, The, and the biggest thing I started to realize was that many of our ancestors came from places that there are large gaps in the documentation that are available. Uh, this could be due to many different reasons, but particularly floods, fires, and unfortunately improper care and storage of the documents. 
Puerto Rico is particularly problematic in this regard, and it forced me to think outside the box and start to concentrate on any ancillary lines that I could follow, even if it was somebody who had only acted as a witness for a baptism or something in my family. I just started putting all of the pieces together and recording everything, you know, uh, testigos, padrinos, e everything that I possibly could, and I started to see a larger picture. Uh, I traced the lines that I could trace back off the island, and most of those came through the Canary Islands. Thank God for the archivists and genealogists in the Canary Islands. They're very proud people, and they're extremely dedicated to documenting their history and making it easily available. So at this point, um, when I had started to put these pieces together, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be amazing if you could just go online to this big master tree of the Sephardim, put a few generations of your history back, and it would ju you just click a button and it would hook you up to your most distant ancestors, uh, sort of like uh, a Sephardic Beit HaTfutzot. Um, I thought to myself immediately, that's silly. Why would you even think of that? It's ridiculous. There's no way you could ever possibly do anything close to that. It's just too much information. Um, six months after I came back from the Canary Islands and I found myself tracing the documentation, particularly from a group of about 20 families that came to Puerto Rico in 1695 with uh, Juan Fernandez Franco de Medina, who had been appointed governor of Puerto Rico at that point, and he was required to bring with him 20 families. Those families settled in the Toa Valley area in Puerto Rico, which includes uh, Toa Baja and Toa Alta. Toa Alta is a town that my direct maternal line ancestors came from for at least five generations from, from that town. So uh, this sort of just got me entering names and names and names, and they, they had to connect. Everybody connected, uh, but it wasn't necessarily in my, my direct uh, genealogy. I transcribed all of the Catholic Church documents from Puerto Rico from about 1650 to 1750, the documents that are available on FamilySearch.org, the Morbin website. Um, I printed out volumes of uh, notarial files from, the, from uh, uh, the Canary Islands, which are available on this uh, Memorias Digital de Canarias website, which is amazing. Um, and I gathered an extensive array of resources. I bought everything up that I could possibly buy when I was in Canary Islands. I came back with a suitcase full of books. I now have 51,180 names in my master tree. And while all of these names are certainly not guaranteed to be Jews, but because of the fact that they all branched off of my ancestors, who I believe to have been Anosim, they're, they're suspicious, and I'm now starting to uh, tag each one. I use Mac Family Tree, so I've entered everything onto Mac Family Tree, and now I, uh, which is a software, for those of you who don't know, uh, I can put uh, photographs in, certainly put sources entered in there, and I tag anyone that has documented uh, Jewish, uh, you know, either from Inquisition documents or a textbook, et cetera. I put a big uh, blue Magen David on there, so when you pull up a tree, you can actually see which ones uh, have, have a document that, that uh, proves that they were Jewish. Ah, okay, so how was I able to connect my ancestors to conversos? At some point in my research, I came across a document and I wanted to show it to you because uh, it's, it's striking because you see how the documents are very difficult to read and I spent so much time going through these documents and transcribing everything off of them. Um, I need some water. So I found a document from December 8th, 1685 uh, for the marriage between Jacomi Ferro and Polonia Martin de Cabrera. I was very interested to see that uh, Fernando had a, a Ferro uh, in his report. 
Um, the name rang a bell. I think it was because of the fact that that's, Jacomi particularly isn't necessarily such a common name in Puerto Rico. And I just thought to myself, gee, I've seen that name before. So I found it in the index of uh, Lucien Wolf's uh, well-known book, Jews of the Canary Islands. And it turns out that in 1662, a certain Gaspar de Vitoria, who was also known as Lopez, Pereira, and de Castro, uh, he was arrested and tortured. And he gave up extensive information about his family and business associates from Portugal, Rouen, and Middleburg in France, Antwerp, Amsterdam, London, and Dublin, including his brother, Manuel Lopez Pereira, and their associate, Jacomi Farrell. In addition, it was reported that a ship called the Prophet Daniel had come to Tenerife from Dublin and that it had been consigned to Gaspar de Vitoria and had presumably come from his brother, Manuel Lopez Pereira, in Dublin. Interestingly, I found Manuel Lopez Pereira, Jacomi Farrell, and the Prophet Daniel in a book called uh, Historia de Puerto Rico from 1650 to 1700. It's uh, by uh, Angel Lopez Cantos, and it was published in 1975. So in a table of uh, cases of contraband, not surprisingly, uh, it lists the prophet Daniel, it lists Manuel Lopez Pereira, and it lists Jacomi Farrell. So that was my first uh, documentation that, yes, these are people that we know were conversos and they were in Puerto Rico. Uh, so I, I started to research these uh, Portuguese merchant families. There are several really good texts available, um, one on Antwerp and London, one on Amsterdam, uh, a couple that are uh, uh, generally about the Portuguese uh, merchants. Uh, and I found that the same groupings, what I call constellations of surnames, would be showing up in those books. And I also saw, the, saw those same constellations of surnames in towns in Puerto Rico, including Toa Alta, where my maternal ancestors had come from. If, if I hadn't been uh, sort of opening up my research to every possible uh, connection and basically everybody in early Puerto Rico uh, that, that we have documents available for, I wouldn't have seen this larger picture and have been able to connect these families in all of these different communities. And in, in addition, I can connect them to Doña Gracia and the Mendez family, to Christopher Columbus, to the early settlers of Madeira, uh, and, the, and the early Portuguese cartographers. It's sort of like a genealogical game of six degrees of separation. So that's how I got here. As a self-taught genealogist, as most of us are, uh, and having a very wide range of experiences and uh, personal connection to the process of returning to the Jewish people. I proposed my ideas to the Institute about a year ago about how I could potentially help others who were embarking on their own research. Over the past year, we've developed our vision for our genealogical research unit uh, with the following goals in mind. To be a welcoming presence online for those who are looking for guidance and assistance in researching their potentially Jewish ancestry. To have a platform on our institute website that allows someone to easily enter in their initial family history. And for a modest fee, we will provide them with a comprehensive report, including sources, as well as a recommended plan for future investigation. To build a network of researchers and academicians who can be consulted for more specific documentation in various geographical areas. Uh, to contribute to the current body of historical research by maintaining and growing a genealogical database which can potentially lead to future research such as whether there are common ancestries between those who come to us seeking assistance and using genealogy to map the migration of converso families into the new world. And to help people who are researching their ancestry connect with others who are researching in that, the same uh, geographical area or from the same family. Uh, I want to say something about primary sources and documentation. Um, I think that if we take the stance that we uh, are only going to 
uh, go off of a direct maternal line with primary source documentation for every generation and a document that shows that they were either in uh, a community of conversos or that they uh, had been practicing Jewish traditions, et cetera, then we're only gonna be able to help a very small percentage of people. Certainly, for those who wish to prove that they're halakhically Jewish, this is absolutely necessary. There's no other way around it. But, um, like I said, that's a very small percentage of people. The goal of our uh, genealogical research unit is to help as many people as possible by giving them a comprehensive analysis of what documentation is available regarding their own genealogical picture and including uh, connecting them with researchers who are available in their family's geographic area who can obtain documentation uh, in the cases where that documentation is not available online. Uh, and then providing them with a plan for further research to be conducted according to their goals. Each individual has a different set of circumstances with varying resources such as time, money, uh, and desire. And genealogical research is extremely time consuming. And I believe that if we can get someone started and light the spark, then they will be much more likely to commit more resources to the search and the search itself is an integral part of the return process for many. Um, we, our website is currently being built. Uh, I was going to show you a picture of the, the general page on the genealogical services and, and what it looks like. It's very user friendly and it's going to be very easy for somebody to, to see what we do, uh, to click on it, to pay and uh, to uh, enter their history and to receive a report. I thank everybody for attending today and uh, I look forward to working with all of you. Uh, I have business cards, so if anybody wants my contact information, uh, I'd be happy to hand those out.